Okay, quite a few people have asked me to do a walk around of the bike um, that I do all my video in on, and it's a T140V 1977 vintage. Um, I've made some modifications to it. Performance wise, um, she's a bit quicker than a standard T140, obviously, with the uh, modifications I've made, and um, she does 111 miles an hour. That's including with the big screen on the front. Um, she obviously, without the screen, she'd probably go even faster. Um, but uh, this old fella bottled out at that. That was on the flat. Um, not really any wind um, from behind or the front. And um, yeah, 111. And that was 111 on a GPS tracker, a speedometer uh, that had a max out um, device on it. That told me the maximum speed I went to, um, not the speedometer on the bike. I have no idea how fast I was going on the bike because uh, I was too scared to look at the speedo. But uh, I know it was quick. Uh, as I say, 111. It's uh, quite fast for an old girl like this. Um, fitted a, a Givy screen, a Givy tall screen it is. Um, and that's because I just can't take the wind pressure anymore on my chest. It's um, for long runs. Um, fitting that screen's made a hell of a difference, and it also is a really good flight eliminator. Um, certainly during the summer months in the evenings. Um, I fitted a Pazon Altair electronic ignition system, which I've got fitted in here. And also I have fitted a um, 70.9989.650 exhaust cam and fitted an electric start uh, which I got from Williams originally and since then I've um, made some changes to that some modifications if you like um, just to improve how it operates and uh, since I did that, it's uh, operated trouble-free. Uh, yeah, with the engine, I've um, polished the exhaust manifold and the uh, matched the silence silencer headers to the manifold on the exhaust side, on the inlet side, uh, and I have matched the carburetor to the manifolds <coughs> so that there are no sharp edges and any parts rough uh, sticking up and I've also roughed up the inside of here to improve the vapor mixture on the uh, carbs I've used a phenolic uh, insulator to keep the carburetor cool. Um, I've used the O-rings system before and I just find that using the phenolic spacer I get much better cooling uh, in the, on the carb which is what you want. Uh, you should never be able to, um, you, sorry, you should always be able to at least touch your carb uh, even when it's been running um, because otherwise <laughs> what's happening is you're boiling the, uh, your fuel and it's vaporising too early and it, and it causes all sorts of weird um, effects and um, can affect your performance obviously as well. I have had the head skimmed and the valve seats recut. I have the existing valve guides in from original as there was nothing wrong with them when I fitted this fitted the uh, when I did the engine rebuild last year and I had the uh, bars opened up uh, plus 20 I've got plus 20 pistons in and I have Harris 7.9 to 1 low compression pistons in 7.8, 7.9 to 1, somewhere on that. I think it's 7.85, weird size, but. Uh, and I run Gotez 
piston rings. I run a triplex chain um, on the clutch, a standard six plate clutch, and I adjust that probably every ooh, five thousand to seven thousand miles. It's pretty trouble free really. The trick with getting a good clutch is the uh, guides that are on the clutch basket. They tend to get burred and if you get burrs on them they will stick. So the next time you have your clutch off um, just run a file down to take out the lumps and bumps that you've got on the, the um, uh, runner where the clutch runs up and down and that will solve your cl sticking clutch problem. I never have a sticking clutch ever it just doesn't happen. Um, I run um, heavyweight springs and I think it's a Van Hill um, cable and two fingers no trouble and I'm not particularly strong, I'm just an ancient old man, we could probably do it with one. Um, it's not a very heavy clutch in my opinion. I've uh, run BSAs with a lot, <laughs> a, lot, a, lot, a lot rougher clutch than that. I also run an X-ring chain, as you can see here. Um, the X-ring chain is quite a big job to fit. Um, you can fit them without making any modifications, but I wouldn't recommend it. To fit one, you need to take off quite a lot of material off the housing in here. Uh, but once you've done that, an X-ring chain fits fine, and it's. it's Basically, when you take the engine out, you're better off doing that, in my opinion, uh, get the job done. This X-ring chain has been on and done, I don't know, 7,000 miles, something like that, and I've never adjusted it since I put it on. Um, I think it's rated at 150 horse, which is a lot more than what the Bonnie puts out. So I'm just beginning to wonder sometimes if I'll ever, if I'll ever have to um, adjust it. It's got no stretch on it. It's as good as the day I put it on. I think the brill. My own opinion. Uh, sprocket wise I run a 20-45 sprocket. Uh, 20 on the front, 45 on the back. And I'm seriously considering going down to a 43 as um, even up at 70 miles an hour I've got heaps of power. And it just makes cruising a little bit difficult and I'd prefer to have a bit less power in fifth and use the gears more. And uh, I think by going down to a 43 I'll get that. I fitted uh, Oxford wing mirrors uh, which I think look pretty cool. Uh, they certainly do the job. Um, uh, inexpensive as well. I think they were about fifty dollars. I have uh, an oil pressure gauge fitted, um, which is an oil full pressure gauge which I bought and made all the parts for it. Made the uh, the mounting bracket, and it's uh, nothing special really. That cost me about a hundred dollars. I think that one. Uh, it's a pretty good one, and uh, the oil field is definitely the way to go with those. I've tried the cheapo ones, they last about 20 minutes. <laughs> so don't buy cheap oil pressure gauges if you're going to fit them. Uh, they become so inaccurate they're not worth using. This one's been on over a year now, and it's I've double checked it with some of my other gauges and it's still spot on. Well worth um, buying. This one is made by, is, this one is called an All Star performance gauge 
uh, for safety I have a, a daylight running light this thing here which I fitted which is an LED and that is really bright um, that also that's a wipes um, three bulb LED and the light it produces is immense for a tiny little light I'll switch it on for you just to see there it is we may not be able to see on camera but that is really really bright you can see it from miles away it's actually brighter than my uh, halogen headlight <laughs> anyway on oh, my side stand um, I've put a a big rubber on it because uh, I have a lot of trouble trying to find the, the end of the pin to put the uh, thing down and, uh, and when that's up it just folds up nicely as I'll try to show you now there she is and she comes down equally as easily Because I just could, I couldn't get hold of the uh, the end of the pin with my foot because my my feet are not nimble anymore. And I've also fitted a squawker on my indicators because I forget to turn them off all the time. In fact, and I've nearly had a few croppers with it. Um, car thinking I'm going to turn left and or right, and I don't <laughs> because I've forgotten that they're on. Any of my little squawkers are uh, quite loud. Um, I originally I made a video and I fitted them into here, but I found that at about 50 miles an hour and above I couldn't hear them, so I just moved it up onto the top of the headlight here. I put two on as well. They were seven dollars each marvelous and i run um an oil pressure uh, sorry an oil temperature uh, sensor which is here um which cost me about 40 50 dollars something like that off uh, ebay and uh, that works that runs off the tank so that's the tank temperature and um, and so that's the oil that's going to the engine which is what I'm most interested in uh, that oil temperature um, and I've never had it above uh, about 82 I think 84 is the maximum that's in the summer when it was 36 37 degrees uh, temperature uh, air temperature and in town after a long hard run I got about 82 I think that's the maximum I've ever had so um, fitting an oil cooler is not necessary really not necessary in my opinion anyway uh, I also fitted a tricolor uh, ignition warning light that changes color it's red now because it's the bikes off and the voltage is below the voltage uh, required uh, to tell me it's charging which is on a lithium battery 13.6 volts and I'll start her up to show you how that works soon uh, under the seat I've got a lithium um, battery and um, a four pole fuse box uh, or four fuse fuse box uh, I've separated my lights out. I've got um, the main fuse, uh, lights, um, ignition and solenoid, which is for the electric start. And I've also got separate battery isolators here, these two. Um, they just isolate my battery 100%. Um, so during the winter I just turn that off and <coughs> that battery never drains at all even with my gel battery on it with those two um, isolators on it never drained at all um, which I can really 
thoroughly recommend. Um, it's nice to just have a battery charge stay charged all over winter without taking it off. Uh, with this uh, tricolour, <coughs> I'll show you how it works. Uh, it does three different colours when it first uh, you first put power on. Um, you've got red, green, and yellow, and you'll see it flash all three colours when it uh, as it does a little test. There you go. If your voltage is below 12 volts, uh, that the red light will flash just to tell you you've got really low voltage which is really useful especially if you've got a boyer um, I run a Pazon so it doesn't really matter uh, well Pazon's good down to about eight seven volts somewhere on there forget not without checking the spec to show you how it works One last thing I remembered, I've got a, a T160 kickstart on mine, um, basically because it just falls out of the way. Um, it makes it easier for me because my knees are not the most nimble now and it just falls nicely out right out of the way, which is really good. They're quite hard to come by, but if you can get one I would recommend fitting it. It's a longer shaft as well, so it makes kicking it over easier. It's, uh, you do have to lift your leg an awful long way up though to get out of it. <laughs> uh, I run standard cigar exhausts. They're nothing special. They're just standard exhausts. People ask me what have I done to them taking baffles out. I haven't taken any baffles out. It's just as she comes. Um, the reason my bike's louder is because of what I've done to the motor. Uh, it's a bigger bang. Bigger bangs need more silencing. <laughs> uh, for front suspension, uh, I put these rubbers on. Uh, when you fit rubbers, um, drill a little hole in it. Uh, I've got a little hole drilled in around the back here. Um, if you don't do that, they'll burst. Um, it's very important to do that. Uh, these rubbers are nothing special. I just bought from my dealer. Um, but... You know, these have been on, I don't know, this was 15,000 miles, probably. And they're just, you can see how mucky they are. <laughs> They've been on forever. Um, but drilling a hole in the back, because when they're compressing and opening up, they burst, although if you don't do that. I don't know why they don't make them like that, but they don't. I've also got progressive um, springs fitted. I've got the seals I use are uh, leak-proof seals. Um, I don't use the um, standard seal um, and I have no problem. Uh, brake wise I have standard brakes which could be upgraded really. <laughs> they're okay, they're nothing flash, they're nothing wonderful, they do the job but yeah I might fit a twin disc at some point when I get some money. Um, and I have, I use um, braided steel, which I have had to have specially made because I haven't been able to buy any um, from any of my supplies anyway. So I've got them made up. Uh, up in the guy up in Auckland made them for me. One last thing, of course, and my bikes don't leak. Bonnevilles do not leak if they're maintained properly. You got. If your body leaks, it's because there's something wrong with it and you need to fix it. It's as simple as that. Um, when I see somebody's body dripping all over the floor, it just tells me that you're not looking after your bike, mate. That's all. <laughs>